Good evening from New York. I am Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS Journeys. Welcome to another edition of Conversations with Selwyn. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, thank you so very much for joining us. Without you, there would be no show. Our guest this evening is Supriya Singh Bodden. She is the founder of the Guyana Foundation, a nonprofit trust working in the areas of raising mental health awareness to combat suicide in Guyana, women's empowerment projects, youth empowerment projects, and community renewal projects. She graduated on the Dean's Honor Roll with a Bachelor of Arts degree from York University, Toronto, Canada, and she holds a Master of Arts degree from the University of London, UK. We're going to do something different tonight. I'm just going to bring Supriya on so we can get the show started without taking a break. Supriya, good evening and welcome to CWS Journeys. Good evening and thank you for inviting me to be on your show. Supriya, let me start by asking you, who, who is this person we have come to know as Supriya Singh? Good heavens, that's a tall order. I mean, where do I start? I'm Guyanese, I'm very proud to be Guyanese. I'm 100% Guyanese flowing through my veins, but unfortunately as a young child I left these shores to uh, go abroad to study and uh, my life, unfortunately for the very first part of my life, I spent a lot of that abroad in Europe and North America um, and uh, then I, I returned here uh, in, in the 80s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot story, Selwyn. I don't know really. <laughs> I, you know, you, you mentioned being born in Guyana. I want to know where did it start and what traditions you grew up with that still resonate with you today? Yeah. I, I, my parents, my father, Sugram Singh, he was um, <clears throat> a barrister at law and also a member of the interim government in Guyana way back in the 50s. And uh, um, he died sadly in 1965. And my mother, uh, they were both brought up in a Hindu home. After my father died, my mother became Christian, and then we all moved away and went to different parts of the world to study and so on. But I grew up in a, a very disciplined home where um, the you know education was was paramount. So everybody had to make the sacrifices to make sure that we all got educated as best as possible, mm -hmm. and that's that's the mandate my mom set for herself. And uh, and, and so off I went to Europe and spent many, many years in Europe between the United Kingdom and Italy uh, studying and spent a lot of my formative years there. Well, before, before we explore your latter years, I want, I want to spend some time in your early timeline. G give us a glimpse. Your dad died in 1965, but give us a glimpse of life as a 9-year-old and a 15-year-old. What was that like? I was actually born in Georgetown and I grew up on Lamaha Street, which is in Queenstown. And um, it was the most glorious time of my life. I remember Queenstown, I can remember every bridge, every house, every fence, every shop. Uh, and I remember all those wonderful days of, of, of being a child in Guyana, uh, playing all the different games we used to play. and. I mean, I drive through Queenstown now and I look at it, of course, uh, it's changed a lot, but those were very, very formative years for me and uh, they obviously um, had an impact on me because I left these shores when I was so young, but I was never, ever able, despite all of the exposure that I got all throughout my life, uh, I was never able to cut linkages with Guyana because those years, um, really uh you know made me who i am and uh and i always wanted to come back and, and so so what is your favorite memory you have of your parents when you were a child what was the favorite what memory of your parents as a child um well my father died when i was only five years old oh but, uh, with, yeah i was very young but um i think uh with my mother i i just enjoyed when she would take us to the um, Essequibo coast, where where she was from, and she would take us on little trips, and uh, th those were those were you know my memories of her. We had a farm on the east bank, and cow, and uh, those two of the days we'd go and feed the cow and do things like that. So I grew up, uh, you know, with with fond memories of. Uh, so Priya, I'm going to touch on this later on in the conversation about 
your 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 fight and your your push for the empowerment of women but it, your mom died when you were very young and then your dad but no, my, my dad died when i was five years old five years old mother, right yes uh, my mother passed last christmas unfortunately yes, uh, when oh she was nine years old oh i see well t tell us about the women in your family that that have made an impact on you um, I come from a, a family of a lot of uh, very strong women. I have um, seven sisters, so it's a family of ten, and eight eight girls and two boys. Um, and so, in my own family, uh, I have very very strong women. Uh, and growing up with them uh, was a joy. I mean, and they span. You know, my sister, one sister who's an artist. They're business women. They're they're you know so many different professions in between um and so we they were very very um powerful sisters to have and uh i grew up with that uh, around me you know but um i think the most important person in my life in terms of the the, the image of, of a woman and what a woman should be was my mother obviously she had an extremely powerful um effect on me because you know I looked at her having lost a husband at such a young age and having 10 children and looking at her make the decisions that she made to take us forward to get our education and a lot of self-sacrifice um, but in in her own way she um, she exhibited a set of uh, strength that you know, was absolutely amazing and she did that until she was uh, her last days when she was 92 so she was really a beacon of light for me and a, and a very, very strong woman uh, that helped uh, me to form my life as well as many other people that she touched. Supriya, so the, the seven sisters. Yes. Your mother, yeah. right? Yeah. What was it like? I mean, what did you get from being among your sisters? I know growing up you play, you play games and, and, and you, you have, of course, your little sibling rivalry and so on. I came from a large family, six sisters. But what was that like? What are some things you remember doing with them that have informed how you relate to women today? Um, there's always been, we talk, we're always open. We are, we, we, we exchange ideas all the time and as sisters, if one one sister wanted to, you know, try to establish a new little business or tr or experiment with maybe renovating properties or something, uh, the rest of us would would tend to talk and encourage that one. So there was always that communication among us, and we were always encouraging each other to do things, and there was always a lot of love and appreciation there, you know. And um, it's that communication because a lot of women are isolated. In, and they live lives, uh, whether it's in their married homes or in families where there's not a lot of communication. And so a lot of their dreams go stifled. They don't have people to talk to. They don't get encouragement. Um, and they live in a very sort of arid uh, environment. And so many times you have women who could possibly, um, you know, turn out to be amazing women but that nurturing isn't there. So I think that nurturing is very important and, uh, and that, well, that's one of the things that worries me about Guyana and that is that I was very fortunate to have a large family and to have that sort of nurturing environment to grow up in which contributed to, 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 to helping me to you know, uh, grow. But a lot of people don't have that, you know, their, their families are scattered because of poverty and other circumstances and, and young women are scattered all over just trying to fend for themselves and they're trying to get by from day to day and they don't have that type of nurturing family life and environment here in Ghana. Yeah. How, how would you compare the Guyana then to the Guyana today? Oh gosh, there's absolutely no comparison. There's no comparison because, you know, so I was doing a, um, an interview the other day and somebody asked me about uh, about where I grew up and, and I said, you know, Queenstown and in Queenstown, for instance, the way Guyana was then, if one of your neighbors saw you walking down the street, if one of your neighbors saw you walking down the street, they'd stop you and say, does your mother know you're here? Because all the neighbors look out for each other. You know what I mean? Yes. It was, it was like extended family. And, 
everyone looked out for each other and uh, there was a sense of community and and caring that went with that sense of community and and how do you find that now it's not it's not here it's not here it's 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 just lacking you know and uh, and that's that and, and here you are an entrepreneur a philanthropist advocate for the empowerment of women what 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 would you say is your personal mission supriya um you know my mission really is I, the only way i can say this to you selwyn is that i mean i've been through some 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 pretty you know difficult uh, times in my life and when uh, the way my life has 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 shaped up now um it has a lot to do with my own spiritual growth because all the years as i lost my father i grew up then i suffered in in the sense of having to go through uh breast cancer and survive it all of those things shaped me into what i am and so i don't think that i knowingly sat down and thought this is what i'm going to do with my life my life unfolded through a set of circumstances and my faith in god is extremely strong and i honestly believe that every single day as i wake up i just uh, set my sights to do the best that i can do with what i have in front of me and uh and it is god's work i have not really i would be lying if i sat here and told you that i sat and planned all these things that i'm doing in my life I, it's god's work and you, i'm just you thankful and i'm going with the flow you migrated you migrated to um just and, and studied abroad and, and studied abroad but but you returned to guyana yes i did after uh in 1989 i returned here to guyana why why supriya what was the lure um well actually i i'd finished doing my masters in london and i um uh at the time i was married to sir shreed at ramphill's son mark ramphill and then we got a divorce and i was going through a rather rough time and so um i took a little break away from my um my work and study in london to come back to guyana to 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 look at a farm that my dad had here and so on um and when i came back i just ended up taking the uh job to remodel the guyana pegasus uh and many many other projects after that so that the lore was coming back here to perhaps retrace some steps get back in touch with who and where i came from and i didn't really realize that it would uh it would become a long standing thing i came back uh, in 89 and i never you know i left i stayed here all the way through and in 2008 i had to leave for a short period of time but um I suppose in answer to your question it's just basically because of uh and you and you keep oh. build uh, and you keep building foundations and talking about foundations let's talk about the Guyana Foundation yeah your non-profit tell us about that yeah um the Guyana Foundation came about simply because uh, I I hate harping back to this but it is a critical part in, of my life and I I have to talk about it because when i when i was diagnosed with breast cancer i was i was going along normally in my life doing business living and so on but after that whole experience of going through breast cancer and chemotherapy and so on you really you have a very very um strong uh that's when you deal with your mortality and it has an impact on you no matter what you say no matter who tells you what when you face your mortality straight head on it affects you And so I finished uh, my chemotherapy in December of 2012 and I spoke to my husband and I said look uh, what I want to do here I'd like to go back to Guyana I I must go back to Guyana um because I I want to give back in some way and he looked at me puzzled like where would you start doing that you know but he was very supportive and I came back in January shortly after I finished the uh treatment And when I came here I um contacted some of my good friends and I said to them you know where what's the state of things in Ghana and basically they were where I'd left them uh everything was there was a sense of hopelessness everyone was complaining there was not a lot of movement still a lot of poverty and 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 serious issues about 
And I said to my friends, uh, who happened to be Stanley and er er Stanley Ming and Eric Phillips, I said to them, look, I don't know if I have the luxury of time. I don't know that I could sit here and say to you that I could wait until the government changes or the political situation changes, because I feel a sense of, 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 of you know, um, that I have to do something and I have to do it now. And I want to set up a foundation uh, to do um, community work, charitable